Fantastic. Hello there, Mas Hellish here, and welcome back to my coding game Let's Play. Here we are, in this episode we're looking at the Mars Lander series and it's the episode one of the Mars Lander stuff. Now, uh, I've had a quick skim over this and there's a lot of stuff here, a lot of stuff, but I've got a funny feeling there's not going to be much to do on this one to succeed. I think it's going to start building on each other. So let's have a look at what's going on. First of all, the goal. The goal is for your program is to safely land the Mars rover shuttle. Fair enough. Um, the landing ship contains a rover. Brilliant. Um, and we have to write a program to guide it down um, onto the surface. It says it may look difficult, but really, uh, in reality, the problem is easy to solve. Let's hope so. Uh, built as a game, the simulator puts a Mars a lander on the sim uh, limited on the uh, Mars sky. Okay, I see. So if we scroll down a little bit, here's our rules. Uh, you can't see this very well on the screen. It's really small. In fact, what I'll do is probably blow it up a little bit. But um, we've got various different things here. We've got the surface. We've got the landing site, the position of the rover, the rotation of the rover, the gravity on 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 Mars. We've also got horizontal speed and we've got vertical speed. Now, I've, I've, I've thought about this already, and it, this arrow here, right? This arrow is really important. It's so important I've put an arrow and pointed to it. In fact, no, it's more important than that. Let's put another arrow point to that arrow. That is really important. It's going to be really important later on. Remember that arrow. Okay, so um, we've got all those different things in that, in that scenario. And then it says, uh, every second, depending on the current flight parameters, location, speed, and fuel, your program must provide the new desired tilt angle and thrust power for the lander. So we can choose what angle the Mars lander is going to be at from 90 degrees to ni minus 90 degrees, zero being straight up, and also thrust power from zero to four. Now. We've got a lot of different notes to go on here, like you land on the flat ground, vertical position is zero. Uh, your vertical speed must be limited to less than 40 meters per second. So basically, if we go any faster than 40 meters per second, the landing gear won't be able to take the impact and the rover will be damaged. Horizontal speed must be limited too. Okay, so what we're gonna do, first of all, is we've got a few, oh, we've got a few game inputs here. Oh my goodness. Yeah, lots of different things there. Constraints, the surface is that way, that way, and the other way. Initialization points, oh my goodness. So much data to go through. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll have a look at the code and we'll run the we'll run the scenario and see what the situation is here. So uh, we've got our main sub, which is what gets run every second. Um, it's dimming a string called inputs and then surface n as an integer and it reads the surface n in that's the number of points used to draw the surface on Mars apparently so it's getting a surface uh, fair enough and it's pulling those points in and it's getting the land in there through the console and we're not really that interested about that we want the main game loop so we've got a oh no hang on that's that's not the loop in every second that is actually just one thing that happens once at the start this appears here to be the game loop where it says the while true um, by the way we are back to VB this episode uh, we only did pay PHP last episode as a one-off uh, if you've got any requests for any languages you want to see me do pop them down in the comments and of course with any other thoughts ideas or questions so what we're we doing? Well, we're dimming a load of variables. We've got some integers. In fact, they're all integers this time. We've got power, rotation, fuel, speed, speed, X and Y. I presume X or Y is possibly our current position in terms of coordinates. And then it gets inputs and reads them, reads them from the console. And it uses this split command, which in VB is that one that turns um, a single string of characters into uh, individual uh, different things, splitting them up using something. And in this case, it's splitting them up by using the space. So we're getting a string of information, a string of numbers, and there's a space between each one, and we're pigeonholing them. And what we do is you can see that inputs zero, which is the first pigeonhole, is our x coordinate. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So our seventh pigeonhole is our power, our current power, I think. So we have to write something in here and then uh, output it to the console. Uh, we have two integers, the rotate, uh, rotate power 
uh, rotate and power, sorry. So here we've got rotate to be zero, so our, ang our desired angle is zero, and for this scenario, if I remember correctly, reading here, yeah, for this scenario, um, we are already zero, I think. Yes. Um, can't remember where it said it. It's, I saw it down here a minute ago. We're already facing zero in this particular scenario. So I don't see the point in turning much unless we have to move. And then we've got power, three. Now, it said in the notes here, okay, let's see where it is. It says that the power of three, let's have a look. here we go. So the, in the game simulates a free fall without atmosphere. The gravity on Mars is 3.711 uh, meters per second, per second. Okay, that's an acceleration. Okay, so the thrust power of X is the um, push, force pushed equivalent to it. Ah, right, okay, so our thrust power is measured in Gs the same way as the gravity is. So a thrust power of 4 Gs in an almost vertical position will compensate the Mars gravity and will probably actually go upwards. Um, and I guess a, th uh, a thrust power of 3 Gs won't be enough and will go downwards. So if we run the scenario now, we can see we're going angle 0, thrust 3. I expect it just to go down and down and down. So let's play the c test case and see what we get here. Right, so we've got our little spacecraft. It looks a bit funny. We're, uh, let's see, we've got some information. Time, altitude, position. I presume position is left and right. And altitude is our height. That looks good. Well, that's what altitude means anyway. Position a little less so. Fuel is going down. So we actually are limited on fuel. We can't just do this forever. Uh, we have zero horizontal speed. So as we thought, we're just going down. And this is, this is an important bit. Our vertical speed is currently 44 in the down direction. That's where the arrow comes in that I spoke of earlier on. In the negative. Now we're currently falling at a vertical speed above 40. So when we hit the ground... Yeah, there we go, just as I thought, Kablamo. So we're going to have to write something that makes us go and throttle up. And I think the code for this is going to be quite simple. So we've actually spent quite a lot of time analysing what's needed to be done here when I think the actual code to fix it is going to be quite small. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to need to put a variable in here instead of just the number 3. So, what are we going to call that variable? Well, it needs to be probably our thrust, I think. Um, yeah, let's call it thrust. So, um, aren't you... Ooh, no, that's the letter I. Thrust, there we go. And what we need to do is we need to dim thrust. We need to declare it. So, dim, and then because I'm lazy, thrust. And we want it to be an integer, so as integer. Brilliant. So we've declared our variable thrust, which we can put a value into, and then we're outputting that value into this bit here. But that isn't going to work. We've actually written the word thrust within that string. So what we need to do now is concatenate that with the variable. So let's move this speech mark here and put it this side of the word thrust. Now the, the, game, uh, the, the simulation knows that we've got a string of zero space and then we're putting the integer in thrust. We just need to stick them together. Now in VB, I can't remember off the top of my head if it's a plus or an and symbol, but we're gonna go with and, I think. Um, and if that doesn't work, we'll flip it to a plus. Right, so we've declared our variable. We're outputting what's in our variable. We need to decide what our variable is going to be. Now I'm thinking, if we're currently going faster than our maximum speed we can drop to, we put our thrust up to 4. And if we're not, we keep our thrust at 3. So the idea is, is we go down at 3, we go down at 3, and then when we go faster than our vertical speed of, well maybe not 40 is a good idea, maybe 39 or 38. Once we go faster than 38, we, ch we up the thrust to 4. So if it's greater than 38 thrust is 4 so let's uh, let's see what we can do here so we go if and then we'll have our condition then we will have our thrust which is our variable here to equal 3 
And if we don't want it to equal 3, else our thrust will become equal to 4. There we go. Now, 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 this, this, and we need to end that if statement as well. Brilliant. So this is where we've got to get it the right way round for our condition, for our arrow. So we want to have the vertical speed. So let's get the vertical speed from the vertical speed um, variable. And if the vertical speed is faster than a certain amount... Now hang on a minute, we, we, we've got the... Th no, let's get this right. Let's put our four there and our three here. There we go. So if the vertical speed is less than, and here's the important bit, minus 39, 38, yeah, 38, then we do 4. Right, now, remember, that arrow pointing down, that important arrow that we had an arrow at, because it's pointing down, and I read this in the notes, it means it's a negative quantity. Okay, so had it as it's starting off, it starts off at zero, and as it goes faster and faster downwards, it's actually going negative one, negative two, negative three. So our target is actually to stop it from going further than negative 40. So if we're less than negative 38, we're getting close to negative 40, and we need the thrust to be four. Right, I think that's it. So let's run the scenario, and hopefully this time we don't crash. So here we go, our vertical speed is currently about 6, uh, where's our thrust? We don't know what our thrust is, let's, uh, oh there, there it is, it's our, our output down there, our standard output is 0, 3, so we're at 0 angle 3 thrust, uh, down here in the corner, uh, standard output stream, I see if, yeah I can highlight it for a split second then, but it unhighlights itself. Um, still going down, now we're about to reach the past the 38 mark, there's the 39, and every time it hits 39, you can see the output stream down there goes to 4. And it keeps switching back between 3 and 4. And I think we're going to have a safe landing on Mars. Here we go. The first hellish vessel on Mars. The flame going through the ground. And yes, our rover as well. Well, there we go, folks. Like I said, not a lot of code, but you have to... There was quite a bit of working out to work out exactly what you had to do and when, and I've got a good feeling that this one we're going to be revisiting the Mars lander in later episodes, and I've got a feeling there's a lot more that we can do with it. Um, just out of interest, <laughs> just out of interest, let's set, let's just comment out this line here. There we are, we're getting rid of that console. I just want to see what happens. <laughs> If we set it to 90 degrees and put our thrust to 4, I just I just want to know. I just want to know what it looks like. All right, there we go. Let's run the scenario. <laughs> it's turning on its side and oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's picking up a it's picking up a lot of vertical horizontal speed there. <laughs> it's just going to go off the edge of the screen. I don't know if it's even going to get to the ground. Or oh, it might get to the ground. It, oh, I don't know. Uh, yes, yes, it went off radar. We went off radar. Well, there we go, folks. Um, my curiosity is satisfied, and I hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you have, remember to give it a like, and, of course, any thoughts, ideas, and questions down in the comments, as always. And I will see you next time. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.